Hello everybody, my name is Leo and if you follow my channel you know that during holidays I've done three YouTube short videos with some leak I used to practice legato, sweet picking and alternate picking. And then actually I received a lot of requests to make more in-depth videos explaining how to play those leaks. Therefore I uploaded a YouTube poll asking which one was more interesting for you. The winner is this leak. And now I will try to explain how to play it. First of all, in the leak there are all major and minor arpeggios and we have three runs of different major and minor chords. In fact, as I'm basically playing always the same patterns, I decided to introduce some variations using different harmonies for each of the three runs. The chords for the three runs are first run E minor, G major, a minor and C major. Second run, E minor, G major, A major, B minor. Third run, E minor, G major, A major, C major. And please remember that I'm tuned in E flat, so a half step down. As you can see, there are also some modulations introduced in the second and third runs, as the chords are not all diatonic and I did it in order to let the three runs to be a bit more interesting as the patterns used are basically always the same. Let's now talk about the pattern used. As I say, these are sequences of major and minor arpeggios, where the pattern for the minor arpeggio is the following. <laughs> The pattern for the minor arpeggio is the following. And now let's play the three runs very slowly. Let me suggest you a few tricks to better learn these patterns. First of all, practice these patterns in the most comfortable position on the neck of your guitar. For example, for me in this guitar, the most comfortable position are around the 7th and 12th frets, where basically I have the best action possible. Once you have found the most comfortable position for you in the neck, let's just learn the patterns, as I was saying. <music> In this way you don't have to care about the chords you are playing in the runs, but you are just focusing on the patterns and you have to memorize the patterns and the fingering. Now the most difficult part of these both patterns are the one crossing the B and E strings, where you basically have to do this movement. Thank you. 
Therefore, the suggestion here is just to practice these two strings. And the most uh, important thing to learn here is the right hand. Now I'm showing you how I'm picking, but obviously you can find your own way. Basically, I'm using the speed picking. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. Another thing to point out is that you have uh, to warm up uh, your right hand and in order to do it you can just uh, do this movement. Now let me point out a few things. The first one is that, in my opinion, there are technical skills for which we may be more inclined and others that can be very hard for us. For instance, when you learn sweep picking, you typically learn to sweep following the classical barre form shape of the core, typically pressing more notes with the same left finger. I mean, something like this. Well, it doesn't work for me. I mean, I'm not able to sweep pressing with the same finger more than one string. Therefore, I have learned a different way to do it. Basically, still playing major and minor chords, but with a shape that allows me to use different fingers for each string. Once I found that this way is easier and doable for me, I decided to follow this path, practicing a lot with just this path, not using any more the previous chord shape. I don't know why this shape is easier than the other one for me, maybe it's related to the way I pick or the way I have trained my left hand along the years, but this is a fact. When I practice the arpeggios with the shape I can play easier, I increase the quality of the arpeggio, I increase my speed and accuracy and overall I'm happier, more satisfied and more inclined to practice even more. On the other hand, the other shape is very frustrating for me and finally I don't improve and feel kind of stuck. That's for saying that you have to find a way that works better for you with which you feel more comfortable and that lets you progress you faster and in a more satisfying way. This suggestion can even be applied more generally to everything. I mean, many years ago I found that playing legato phrases in a specific way was easier for me and I was able to improve a lot in that area, much faster than with, for instance, tapping. Therefore, I invested a lot more in that type of legato phrases and now I can play legato phrases that I like a lot smoothly. Obviously, you don't have to give up at the first problems, you have to try and try it, but do it in a clever way. Try to follow your inclinations and try to identify the things you can do better, that are in line with your way of playing and overall try to find your own way to do things, the way that allows you to improve faster. I don't know if it makes sense for you, but this is the way I have unconsciously followed along the years. The second thing I would like to point out is that the note in the E string is the one with which you can play around the most. Let me show you how. Normally you play in this way. I can enrich it and make it more interesting playing around this E string. Or for instance, doing something like this. Basically, when you are in the E string, you can play the typical licks uh, that you play alternating the pick, something like this. Mm -hmm. 
and in this way you are gonna enrich uh, the wall uh, arpeggio. You have now reached the end of this video. Please let me know in the comment below if you appreciate these types of videos so that I can make even more of them. I hope you have enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and leave a thumbs up. It would be of a great help. If you're interested in my ARs, you can check out the link in the card above or description below where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.